So the most important thing in a patient treatment is the why. Why are we treating the patient? With different physicians, the how can vary. Do they use a needle? Do they use a cannula? The depth that they inject? The what, which filler is chosen? Which neurotoxin is chosen? It's a very personal decision, very much like a chef in a kitchen as to what dish, how they prepare it, what ingredients and the proportions of the ingredients. But the most important thing with a physician-patient relationship with uh, non-surgical rejuvenation is that you agree on the why and what the patient needs to achieve it. So what we have here, the patient who's never had any filler before, she has a very narrow face and it's very long. She's gotten loss of the fat pads here, 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 and here. In addition, she has a tendency to turn her mouth down and she has a tendency to frown and look a little uh, uh, mad. So what we wanna do is we want to expand the lateral face on her, do minimal work on the central face, and to give her a smoother, more uh, relaxed and uh, refined and somewhat of a serene look to the face. So we're gonna start superior, and I'm gonna start with using uh, Sculpture in the Temple. The use of Sculpture is important to understand with the patient that this is not gonna give as immediate effect as the gel fillers, but I like Sculpture in this area because of its safety. We have the assistant immediately hold pressure to each area. Now the next thing we're going to use is we're going to use uh, RHA4 in the cheek. Chin up for me. Now, the way I decide where you need it in the cheek is several ways. If you notice when I do this, there's a depression here. See, it comes up here, but it's depressed here. So that tells me that there's volume loss in this area here. In addition, smile. When I smile, you see a cheek projection here, but not here. And she's a little flat here, and we'll get to that. So what I like to do with the RHA4 is to stay in the sub Q. This is a product that is very soft and natural. It has nice flexion. I don't like to bury it on the bone like we do with the Voluma. And there's a reflux with each injection. And you're gonna hold here laterally. In addition, we're gonna put just a little bit right in this mid cheek spot because she has a tendency to flatten out here. And we're just gonna put a drop there. That's gonna start to make the tear trough look and feel better. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the Voluma along the jawline. The reason I like Voluma here is it is firmer and gives a little bit more projection and a little bit more structure. So what we're gonna do is do struts as if to build a jawline laterally. And um, Voluma is great in that you get a very nice, result immediately and it seems to look even better about six hours later. And that's gonna create more of a jawline for her. And then we're gonna do one a little bit here. And the purpose of this is to give her a little bit more angularity to the jaw and a little bit more lateral projection. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to use a cannula to use the Juvederm uh, Ultra Plus in the peak of the nasolabial fold. And the reason I'm doing a cannula is for safety purposes um, in this area. I also like that I can go, just hold laterally for me, that I can go at different depths without changing the needle position. So we're gonna go a little bit more superficially. Now the nice thing about doing this first is it's gonna give her some anesthesia for uh, when we do her lips. Now, with the lips today, just because I'm in the mood, 
I'm going to use uh, Rastel and Kiss. Rastel and Kiss is rather new. Um, so I don't have long-term experience with the duration. How you doing? Okay, good. Okay, so we're gonna put a little, we don't wanna give her a lot of lip because again, we don't wanna emphasize her central face. We wanna em emphasize her lateral face, but we wanna soften everything and you look softer when you have a little bit more lip as you age. So what we're doing is we're just doing in the submucosa just to build a little volume and a little projection. This way, because it helps lift. And the lips, which can be a more painful area, is usually very well tolerated with a combination of the topical anesthetic that we use. We also have the patient using a, vibra a vibration device. It's called distraction therapy. And it helps divert the brain's attention away from uh, the area that's being injected. Okay, now hold there. Now we're going to put a little bit of the Voluma now. Notice I've been working from superior to inferior and been working on the, um, uh, the lateral face before the medial face, but we wanna give her a little projection of the chin here. So we're putting a little Voluma right in the tip of her chin because with a woman, you don't want to do the pre jowl sulcus and marionette without doing a little in the chin because if you do, you can square off that chin and make it look more masculine. In addition, we're going to use a little bit of the, uh, of the kiss in the corner of her mouth to give it a little bit of lift. Now we're doing this side of her face and then we're gonna do the other um, afterwards to shorten the video. But I think you can see the better projection. Let go. Here and here and a little bit better lip on this side than this side. Now we're going to do Javeau and we're gonna do the Javeau to give her a little bit of a lift to the brows. Okay. Would you make a face like you smell something unpleasant? Okay, relax. So everybody's muscles move differently. So what we're doing is we're doing her nasalis and her procerus first. It's important not to ignore those when you're injecting. If you don't treat them, you can recruit them and get them stronger. Frown like you're mad at me, good. And then you wanna grasp the muscle and make sure that you're above the orbital rim push it up and above the orbital rim. Now, she has a low forehead, so we're not gonna do anything to her forehead today. We're gonna see how much of a brow lift we get, and then we're gonna adjust the, the forehead later. Let go. Now, uh, would you pout for me? Notice when she pouts, she pulls this muscle down here, so we wanna inject that. And would you flex your chin like you're really mad at somebody? Okay, we're gonna do we're gonna do this side first. Grimace again big time. We want to grab that platysma muscle and also right here where the jowl is, there's also a submandibular salivary gland that when you inject it will shrink and it will make the jowl look less apparent. Okay, now we'll do the other side. 